Ketamine is a medication mainly used for starting and maintaining anesthesia although it has also been used to provide rapid relief of treatment-resistant depression. The ability to rapidly stabilize severely depressed patients has been demonstrated in several studies and has led researchers to search for the exact mechanism by which ketamine works. The effort is important as ketamine is sometimes illicitly used for its psychedelic properties and could also impede memory and other brain functions. The multiple actions of ketamine has spurred scientists to identify new drugs that would safely replicate its antidepressant response without the unwanted side effects. Now, emerging research from University of Texas at Southwestern Medical Center scientists has identified a key protein that helps trigger ketamine's rapid antidepressant effects in the brain. This is a crucial step to developing alternative treatments to the controversial drug being dispensed in a growing number of clinics across the country. Researchers from the Peter O'Donnell Jr. Brain Institute have now answered a question vital to guiding future research what proteins in the brain does ketamine target to achieve its effects as Dr. Lisa Monteja, professor of neuroscience at Southwestern's O'Donnell Brain Institute states now that we have a target in place, we can study the pathway and develop drugs that safely induce the antidepressant effect. The study published in Nature shows that ketamine blocks a protein responsible for a range of normal brain functions. The blocking of the N-methyl dispartate NMDA receptor creates the initial antidepressant reaction, and a metabolite of ketamine is responsible for extending the duration of the effect. The blocking of the receptor also induces many of ketamine's hallucinogenic responses. The drug, used for decades as an anesthetic, can distort the senses and impair coordination. But if taken with proper medical care, ketamine may help severely depressed or suicidal patients in need of a quick, effective treatment, Dr. Monteja said. Studies have shown ketamine can stabilize patients within a couple of hours, compared to other antidepressants that often take a few weeks to produce a response, if a response is induced at all. As explained by Dr. Monteja, patients are demanding ketamine, and they are willing to take the risk of potential side effects just to feel better. This demand is overriding all the questions we still have about ketamine. How often can you have an infusion? How long can it last? There are a lot of aspects regarding how ketamine acts that are still unclear. Researchers will work to answer these questions as they plan two clinical trials with ketamine, including an effort to administer the drug through a nasal spray as opposed to intravenous infusions. The results of these trials will have major implications for the millions of depressed patients seeking help, in particular those who have yet to find a medication that works. A major national study at Southwestern led more than a decade ago STARD yielded insight into the prevalence of the problem up to a third of depressed patients don't improve upon taking their first medication, and about 40% of people who start taking antidepressants stop taking them within three months. Ketamine, due to the potential side effects, is mainly being explored as a treatment only after other antidepressants have failed. But for patients on the brink of giving up, waiting weeks to months to find the right therapy may not be an option. Dr. Monteja touches on expected future developments, where ketamine opens the door to understanding how to achieve rapid action and to stabilize people quickly. Because the NMDA receptor that is the target of ketamine is not involved in how other classical serotonin-based antidepressants work, our study opens up a new avenue of drug discovery. This guest article originally appeared on psychcentral.com. Researchers learn how ketamine acts on the brain by Rick Nowitt, Ph.D. References Suzuki, K. Nosy Raver, E. Hunt, K. Cavallari, E. Monteja, L. 2017. Effects of a ketamine metabolite on synaptic NMDAR function. Nature, 5,467,659, E1, E3. DOI 10.1038, Nature 22084, further reading February 1, 2016, this Sunday, February 14, 9 p.m. E.T., the Emmy-nominated Brain Games TV show is back. Wonder Junkie Jason Silver returns to our screens, teaming up with Read More Like What You Read Give to Brain Blogger sponsored by GNIF with a tax-deductible donation. Make a donation.